<sighs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to my AEW Dynamite review. A lot of things going on in the show tonight as the title eliminator continues. Obviously, this whole title tournament is really predictable in general. We all know who's going to go to the finals in general. Just like the TNT title, these tournaments have become very predictable. But, hey, something still comes good from out of it anyways, though, okay? Uh, but we do kick it off tonight. With MJF and Wardlow as they were being interviewed, as Wardlow's getting ready for his match against Hangman Page, uh, MJF say, you know, Wardlow's going to win this whole tournament, but he is going to give his title shot to me because his contract is owned by me, so uh, yeah, when he wins the tournament, I will get the title shot, basically, as Wardlow had basically agreed to it then, Sammy Guevara came up then, very pissed off at MJF, um, basically... Tell him to cut the shit, saying we're not friends. You will never be in the inner circle. Which, by the way, um, Sammy Guevara, I know you're trying to sound angry and everything, but it's almost like he's coming off as a tryhard. But then when you're going against somebody that's, what, 90 to 80% better than half of the roster at promo and whatnot, Sammy Guevara, maybe not the best way to put in there. They're almost like he was trying to... F Kind of forgetting lines at one point. Warlow was about to do something, but MJF said, no, 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 go get ready for your match. MJF said, I like what you did on Matt Hardy, but, you know, uh, I have one note for you on uh, one of your promos or whatnot. MJF said, don't, don't do it. And MJF, but, um, you know, he's, Kavar said, don't do it. MJF said, like, come on, man, but, um, you know, he got in his face, and uh, <clears throat> Kavar told him that, listen, I told you I was thinking about and then you don't know what is going to happen, okay? MJF and Wardlow walked away then. Basically, it was Hangman versus Wardlow, which the match was good, I'll say that. Um, very predictable. We all know who's going to win this match. Obviously, Hangman's going into the finals of this tournament. Some would say, as my friend Steven said tonight, he liked the um, match with Jungle Boy a little bit better last week with Wardlow. I thought this was still good. Maybe Wardlow's still a little green out there. We haven't really seen this guy wrestle that much. He's not bad but you know that he still has some time to uh you know still work on some things but the match was okay and whatnot nothing special but come on um hangman he won with two buckshot lariats and whatnot for the win so um hangman obviously goes to the finals of this tournament john moxley cut a promo talking about being the champion for a long time now and he's always has a target on his back and there's no time to make excuses and whatnot just like Eddie Kingston basically has some words to say to him when that I quit match comes and um basically he's going to be alone with his ego because Mox had said it's gonna be a lot of broken skulls wind piped and especially eagles so Eddie protect your neck uh, Eddie Kingston then came out with the Butcher, the Baker, and the Candlestick Maker, or the Butcher, Blade, and Bunny. Talking about Matt Seidel, you know, talking about he won that tournament. Well, you know, he was never eliminated to that tournament, taking a shot at uh, Lance Archer and whatnot. Telling the cameraman to get out of the ring and so he can go against Matt Seidel. Uh, Matt Seidel is basically a sacrificial lamb right here. You know, I'm kind of surprised they kind of got him in this position. How long has this guy been in this company again? It's like probably the third time we've seen him on here. So, why feed him to Eddie Kingston? I don't know why they did this for. Um, this is basically, you know, to get the whole I quit match over. You know, he held his submission in and, you know, tell him to quit. Basically, I'm sorry, Mox, I'm sorry. But um, I'm surprised they would put Matt Seidel kind of in this uh, spot right now. Instead of, I don't know, somewhere um, a little bit bigger in my opinion. I don't know why he's kind of in this. But, next though, we went to um, Excalibur. Interviewing both the Young Bucks and FTR for the match of full gear. You know, talking about the injury with uh, Matt Jackson. Matt said, you know, the injury is okay. Just a baby injury. But, you know, uh, this match, they've been trying to brew this for years now. As um, Hardwood even said, like, you know, I'm not afraid of getting a lot of backlash on the internet and whatnot. But uh, this is supposed to be a dream match, right? But, you know, the titles um, are bigger than this dream match, he says. Uh, basically, Cyber says he's known the Young Bucks for years. Even helped him get this job and whatnot. And talk about the locker room has changed and everything. That match action says when you mess with our friends, it's triggered something now at this point. So FTR better be ready. FTR left and didn't want to do this interview anymore. It's Matt Jackson talk about him and his brother self made training each other uh, to wrestle in their backyard and whatnot. And you know, full gear. If they don't get those titles back, they will never face for the titles again. 
this promo was not really good. Number one, the Young Bucks, I just don't bad in, buy into their little badass or some type of edgy whatever persona they're trying to put on right now. Nick Jackson didn't even say anything through the whole promo. He just sat there. He said nothing. They just let Matt do all the talking. I still think Matt Jackson looks like just like a homeless version of Matt Hardy for some reason. I don't know why. It's just really hard to... Um, Biden a promo when it's showing heel tendencies, but you're going against a heel team for the tag titles. It's not really making them come off cool or triumphant. Like I said, like I said before, it's not making them look like badasses. Like they're trying to be heels, but they're coming off as tryhards also. That's basically what they're coming off as. Tryhards right here. So I just don't buy into the Bucks like persona or whatever they're trying to do. This promo is not really good in general, and I'm just not buying into their little act right now, okay? Um, it's like, oh, I won't face for the titles again, which almost tells me that they may win the titles for all I know, but I'm just not buying into this um, whatever act. And like I said, the other one's not even saying anything. He's just sitting there, so there you go. Uh, the Inner Circle came out as Tony Schiavone and Dasha Puentes were there for this town hall meeting. I guess they're going to be the moderators. Um, Jericho, LAX, and Sammy Guevara came out. Jake Hager was not there. He is preparing for an MMA fight later this week, so I may check that out and give it a chance. But Bellator, uh, MJF, and uh, you know Wardlow came out then as they started asking questions. Luchasaurus asked about dinosaurs being extinct for over 65 million years now at this point. As MGF said, you know, it's a good question and everything. He had a graphic saying that the Inner Circle's numbers and revenue are down. But with me, we can get those revenue numbers up. Britt Baker and Rebel came in. As Rebel basically um, wanted to talk about Jericho had this great smile. Basically, she was real horny for him for some reason. As Baker said, you know, she loves him, JF. And, uh, but you don't have to be a dentist to see you have a terrible track record when it comes to friends in AEW. As Jericho um, said, it's a good point and everything. And yes, he's aware of MJF's past, and that if they tried to take him, that's why he's not joining Inner Circle, because if he tried to betray us, we take him out right now. Uh. But, um, you know, MJF said, you know, you guys got into this business for championships and money and whatnot. That's why you need to, you need to join this faction. Peter Avalon, the librarian, says, I'm just going to ask it. Can I join the Inner Circle? They laughed him off and said no. Next, we got Mr. Eric B. from Cody, Wyoming. Eric Bischoff came in, which I'm starting to feel like some others. This guy is just almost doing anything to get a job at this point. I don't know. The only time I really hear about Bischoff nowadays is mostly Barry in the WWE, which it's just justifiable. We all have done it too, but I do believe he's just trying to get a job in a way at this point. As he talked about JFK and everything, talking about what MJF can do for the inner circle, and says it's a great question, friendship and whatnot. And Bischoff, you know, asked what the inner circle can do for him. And, um, you know, MJF said, you know, he may not be the best team player, but he can learn how to do it once he joins a faction. Bischoff said he knew Jericho for many years and called him a prima donna. Jericho got pissed off as Tony Schiavone told him to shut up. Basically, this is almost like another WCW war going on right here. So welcome back to Wednesday Night Nitro, folks. As Bischoff, uh, you know, say MJF, she has many likes of uh, Jericho that you guys will end up just killing each other. As MJF, you know, was pissed, Jericho said, answer the question. And, um... You know, MJF said, oh, would you stab, ask when MJF stabs in the back. MJF said, you know, I have a question in uh, the union. Basically saying, you know, he's done with Jericho about the whole last segment, uh, being a, last week's segment being the best segment of Jericho's career ever, which I'm not going to go into that. I've already said what I've had to say about that little family guy segment last week. Like I said, up and down on it. So um, I'm not going to sit in there like it was the greatest thing. Like I said for, uh, which I'll get to that in a second, too. You know, I, I will say something about that. But, uh, you know, MJF went on says, I've done a lot in AEW. But he uh, says, what haven't I done? Jericho says, you haven't beaten me. So I'm going to give you a chance then at full gear, one-on-one. -on -one. If you win, you can join the inner circle. And MJF says, I will do anything to win. You understand? Anything. As Ortiz got tired of him, says, all you do is run your mouth, Okay. We're sick of this. I don't want you in this inner circle. Sammy don't want you in the inner circle. Santana's kind of up and down on and everything. Uh, Jay Kager, if he was here right now in that train for a fight, he said you don't want an inner circle. And, um, you know, you just want to entertain and whatnot, okay? 
you not come into faction. Or Ortiz said, you know, me and you know, Sammy are next week. We're going to face you and Wardlow. And that next week, you will not make it uh, to the pay-per-view. Got it? Uh, this segment was okay. I guess this whole town hall thing is supposed to make fun of the whole presidential election, maybe, in a way. Uh, like I said, do I think it's better than the little family guy Brian and Stewie segment last week? To an extent, yeah, and whatnot. But, you know, it's my friend that said one point about this, though, tonight. Uh, it's like they've become more sports entertainment than being the alternative to WWE. I've said that for a minute now. I said that last week, okay? And I said, go look up interviews of this if you want to. But remember, when they said before this company, they wanted to be a sports-based wrestling product. But they've become more sports entertainment today than they've become sports-based wrestling product. All right? Look it up, folks. Look it up. You can't make this one up. But he said, like, too much sports entertainment. Yeah, I know. There's more sports in uh, sport. I thought it was supposed to be a sports-based wrestling program. They got too much sports entertainment. Uh, I know they had a video pack for Taz and crew trying to get Willie Hobbs to join the crew. Cody went against um, Orange Cassidy in a lumberjack match, which uh, this makes no sense because, A, this lumberjack match was supposed to, to uh, keep the Dark Order out of the match, but... The Dark Order of Lumberjack. So that makes zero sense. That's some WB booking type show. Who booked that? That's stupid as hell, okay? Um, and of course, the Dark Order members were going to get involved and whatnot. I know that trust fall thing with Cassidy where they dropped Cody. And, you know, the Dark Order, they kept fighting, trying to get involved several times until, like, what? John Silver and them got in the ring trying to go for Cassidy. Cody got rid of him and did the crossroads on Cassidy for the win. He still retained the title as L. all the Lumberjacks start brawling in some WWE shit right there. If Billy Gunn, I know he hit the famous on one of the Dark Order guys as they still stood in the ring. Billy Gunn looks bigger than half the AEW people out there during that match, okay? Guy's still big as shit. Why don't they really do anything with him? I don't know. But, <clears throat> yeah, and they showed Darby Allen watching up in the Raptors and whatnot. Yeah, I said this about Darby Allen, and listen, I know it doesn't really make sense he has a title shot either, because they just kind of said he has a title shot, just to have a title shot and whatnot. Uh, but here's the thing, though. Instead of doing this match, you could just been focused on Cody and uh, Darby Allen to build up in the full gear. Because there is history behind this going all the way back to Fighter Fest when it was a tie the first time. And even the tournament for the TNT title uh, the first time, Cody beat him. This could have been a way, you know, to do promos on how Darby's going to get his payback or something. Not like a redemption story, but talk about he's going to get that belt off of Cody. And that this company needs a new TNT championship. And that's you basically telling Cody. So they could have had time to build this up, but... Obviously, they didn't, as my friend Kyle said. Uh, yeah, they're too lazy to do that. I'm sure they are, okay? Because they could have just spent weeks building instead of just doing this match with Cassidy again if you're going to make Darby Allen the, lead, the, the leader, the number one contender and whatnot. That would have been a better idea, given that there's some history on this, okay? Um... The best friends were walking back to Amir and Saban wanted to apologize about the old attack about the Allen game or whatever it was last week. They said trick or treat when playing before. Beating up the best friends saying they would never forgive them after still arguing about this whole video game. This is stupid. This few whose booking is worse, folks? Miro on Lana's, okay? At least I can enjoy Lana going through a table and I find that hilarious. So whose booking is worse? And listen, this whole feud is dumb. This is over an arcade machine. We saw like, what, one, two weeks? That's dumb, all right? This feud makes no sense. Then again, the last feud that the best friends were in made no sense. Hey, we're going to fight over Trent's mom's van because it got broke the first time. We'll stretch this on to some parking lot brawl. Think about that, folks. Why? 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 I, I, I don't even know why. <sighs> fight over a video game machine. Makes no sense. Serena D, the new NWA Women's Champion, uh, beat, um, I know she beat Thunder Rose, I guess this was last night, I heard about it, but I heard more today, some people believe she's going to WWE, I don't know what's going on with Thunder Rosa right now, I'm surprised she lost the title to Serena D, but, um, I don't know what's gonna happen if she'll be back in that, Serena D did go against Layla Hurst, basically a showcase match, um, and whatnot, so, uh, with this showcase match and everything, um, D basically got the win, what was it, like, eight minutes and whatnot. Good match. Yeah, the, the match was good. Um, 
I think this through for a second. Um, and whatnot. But um, yeah, this this was not bad at all. Okay, actually, a really good um, match from here. Uh, given I didn't really know what's going on, but um, I will say one thing: the NWA Women's Championship gets more TV time than the regular AEW Women's Championship, which they only showed Sheeta for a few seconds, uh, challenging um, neither Rose in full gear. But at least the NWA title is getting getting some shine. I'm just very surprised that th the title is off of Thunder Rosa. Um, Sean Spears when he gets his VSK, VSK guy. Sean Spears is a C4, and that's it. I guess they're trying to build him into something. He's been a joke for so long. Now that you want to try to make him some bass again, I don't know how that's going to work because he's been a joke for the longest here, folks. Um, then some bulls throwing some candy at him then. Spears threw him in the ring, ended up being Scorpio Sky, hitting him with a TKO then, taking out Sean Spears, probably being a match at um, full gear, all I know. Uh... In the main event, we got Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. Phoenix was not in the match. Phoenix got hurt last week, so Pentagon was his replacement. You know, Eddie Kingston, uh, trying to, like, I gotta fight my best friend and whatnot. Which, you know, by the way, even when they came out, Pentagon kind of slapped Phoenix's hands to the back. They didn't really want anything to do with him. Kenny Omega, um... Of course, as over the top entrance like last week with all these announcements, probably didn't put more Meltzer in this as they did all those Meltzer references last week. And I'm hearing what he's on the payroll for AEW again. And his documentation of it. I'm seeing that on the internet today, so uh, not surprised by that one bit. I kind of feel he's been on the payroll for a while now, like a lot of other people. Come on, just look, folks. So you can tell he's on the payroll, okay? Um, but Kenny Omega came out of the AAA Mega Championship. This was not bad. Now, I know there's a lot of no selling going on in this match. Hey, I can hit you with Canadian Destroyer off the top rope and hit you on the concrete, get you with a package power drive, but you still kick out at two? That don't make no sense, okay? Basically, this became a finisher fest then. And, um, you know, even that arm breaking thing doesn't even break your arm no more. It just uh, injures it slightly. Uh, basically, Kenny ended up hitting him with a um, V trigger in midair. Then, um, one wing angel for the win. So, basically, Omega is moving on to the finals. Like I said, this tournament is very, very predictable. Um, we all know who's going to win. Well, I wouldn't say win the tournament, but we already know who's going to the finals of the tournament. We knew this was going to be between, um, Omega and Hangman Page at the pay-per-view. So, just get ready to see what goes down with that. Um, like I said... We all know who who is gonna win or go in the finals of this tournament, so it's a no brainer on this one. Okay, who wins the tournament? I don't know. Okay, overall AEW had a good episode. I will say that on some parts, I did not like that Bucks promo. I'll tell you that. Uh, the tournament matches weren't that bad. Um, the town hall was whatever. Deep had a good showcase match. Um, TNT title up and down on it because. Um, why did this match need to really happen again and whatnot? I don't know why. I didn't really want to see it. And like I say, you're supposed to be keeping the Roy the Dark Order, but you put him as Lumberjacks. That's dumb as ever, okay? But um, that makes no sense. Other than that, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Hood 990. Tell what you think about this show, how bad it was or good it was or whatever you want to say about this. Please tell me, all right? Other than that, see you guys later. Peace out.